going off. Yeah. And, uh, you know, Miles just kind of roasty toasting his feet with his alarm clock. Yep. And <laughs> you all wake up. And you all wake up. What do you guys do? What would you like to do, I should ask? Haribo rubs his eyes. What the heck was that? Oh, they're still going off. <laughs> they haven't stopped. <laughs> now, are these from the castle? Uh, they're from all around the city, from, okay. from what you can tell. It's very auditory that there's, like, at least eight different bells going off. Well, we've got to go. Eh. Let's go. And you all get up, get ready, put some clothes on. And as you walk outside... You see everyone kind of leaving their house. Many dwarves on your side. You don't see any elves on your side, actually. And they all have their little pickaxes and shovels and such. And they're all walking down. And all of them look, honestly, about the same. All the same attire. Full black clothing. Beaten. Scarred. Tired. The usual. And you guys get to this long boat, just this giant kind of like Viking ship where you see uh, some elves and more so like dwarves still. And then you see one particular man just like standing on there looking as cocky as ever. Miles. <laughs> yes. <laughs> no. And you walk up to the boat and he goes, are you the ones questioning them? Yeah, that's awesome. Yep. Nice to meet you. I'm Jarvin. Get on. Purple. Oh, wow. Look at him. He's purple. Oh, my. Oh, he's cool. Is he an onyx person? He is, is he just a, a drow. Guy? He's a drow. A drow. Oh. Yep. Just like Cyrus. Um, So you guys get on the boat, and you notice that there's like one dwarf that's just kind of like struggling to get his stuff together and you immediately see Jarvin walk over and just kind of kick this dude just like into the side of the boat where almost the whole thing shakes and he grabs him by his hair and he's like get yourself in line peasant and he just throws him and this dwarf is just like <laughs> just like terrified Aww. utterly terrified Aww. and Hi. gets himself okay. together and he's like Let's get going. We're running late. And they all start rowing in synchronicity, and he's standing at the top of it, just looking out at the sea, and every now and then turning around, looking back at everyone who's all silent, all of them, as if this is like clockwork for them. You see another like two boats behind you guys that also has many a dwarves heading over as you guys see this massive cave kind of mountain-esque island. Just maybe like a 10, 15 minute boat ride, honestly. And they all get off and you guys will get off last as he holds you guys on the boat. As all the dwarves are walking in, he has to make sure to keep them in line is the best way to say it. I just ask uh, what they're mining here and make small talk with the guy. and uh... Yeah. Yeah. What are they mining here? And he just doesn't answer. And he's like, I will speak to you when I need to. You're here to speak to my dwarves once they're in the cave. That's right. all. I thought I was a human here, but all right, whatever. And he then just kind of continuously does that. Once everyone gets in, you guys are then in the mines as well. And he walks off and he's just kind of out of your way doesn't speak to you at all and you see all these dwarves working who would you like to go speak to i want to go find the one dwarf who got kicked around oh yep yeah so we'll say he's uh this guy right here we'll say it's him he's right in the front he's down on the lower level there going over here. there's like a ladder near him and he's just working away can I follow uh, Jarvin? Uh, yeah, you can definitely follow Jarvin. I'm going to go with Simonyar here. 
All right, we'll say he went over this way. I didn't add his token on there because he wasn't really going to do anything. But, yeah. Why am I about to type in... Uh, I mean, uh, find me a photo. This... What does this person look like? There's, there's no way this is real. I mean, it kind of works. <laughs> Well, that's a woman. We can't use that. Okay. I'll put him on the map in a second. Oh. But. <laughs> so. You guys follow him. Alright. We'll go to Harbo and Willow first. This guy, good. Jesus, he's huge. Oh my gosh. <laughs> we'll <laughs> shrink him down a bit. Much bigger than I expected that token to be. There we go. We'll stand here. All right, so you two go and talk to this dwarf over here who's just, like, kind of slowly chipping away at this stone. What do you guys have to say to him? Are you okay, friend? Do, that was a little rough. Do the dwarfs know common, or do they only speak dwarfish? It's a good question. Just try speaking to him. Hey, do you know common or do you speak <laughs> Dwarvish only? <laughs> he only responds in Dwarvish. I relay this information to Haribo. Oh. Winslow, well, huh? ask him if he's okay. As you do. <laughs> I assume. <laughs> I was like, we're not going to go through this tedious moment here. <laughs> I'll just say you. I'll say you translate, I assume, correct? Yeah. Okay, great. And he's just like, yes, that's that's normal. Those are daily. I'm sorry. You're nowhere near I... here. You're not <laughs> sorry. No. <laughs> and he goes, are you guys needing something? I, I need to get to work. I don't want to get yelled at. Oh. Oh. Here, Bo quickly tears off a small piece of bread, hands it to him, and says, this is for all the trouble that you've gone through so far. Hopefully it'll get better soon, friend. Then he just nods and takes it and just kind of eats it. And then he gets back to work, unless you guys have no questions for him. Hairbo doesn't want to uh, get in any more If you trouble. don't, I, I don't want to keep bothering you, but we are looking for some information on um, on Haku, if you know anything. From the Pochel? Yes, that's correct. I, I mean, I know some of the story from what my parents in family told me before they died but that's that's about it I've never read it but I know it's from there oh. and what would that information be I mean just basic knowledge as I don't know much I'm sorry I only know it's a story and a name in the Pichel do you know of anybody that may have more information? Uh, there's a few people that work on the right side of the mine that have talked about families and long lineages. They might have more stories to tell. My family's not that old. Very well. Thank you for your time. All mm -hmm. the best. Thank you. And as you guys then walk to wherever you want to go next or question next, Miles and Zeminiar, you guys follow Jarvan into this room where you see a many of just kind of doors that are I'm like not doing good. As in they are looking bad to where they just fold cloths for the day and like clothing and such. And he just is kind of standing in there watching over them as you guys hear just knocking of the wood and well, not wood but stone you just hear like a bunch of hammers kind of just echoing throughout this place a cacophony of hammering and punching and mining and moving of stone lots of stone work happening in here 
And he just stands there and watches these uh, this group fold some cloth. And anytime they slow up, he just kind of jumps on in and does what he needs to do. Without going into too much detail. When he does that, I'm mm-hmm. going to fuck with him and use the Ritagi. <laughs> oh my god, go for it. All right, so he he does get a chance to save, by the way. Yeah. Uh, 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 um, can I use it from the core? Do I have to use it in the... Uh, No, I am. I, I just have to put it up. So, I think he passes, though. Hold on. I don't think so. Not with a nine. Not with a nine, but I need to make. I need to finish. I need to double check something. I'm surprised if he had a four bonus. Depends what level he is. Yeah. Uh, spell save thirteen. Yeah. Uh, and if he uh, if he no, does he here, okay. Wait, does he save? No, he doesn't. Then he what he is it's is an anonymous whisper telling him that he was he's only one birth away from being in the same exact shoes, and that he uh, he is nothing, and he is no one next to any of these people who do all his work and suffer his blows. Mm-mm. I don't even think there is a saving throw for this, actually, because it doesn't do any damage or anything. This does That's some mental stuff. Yeah. He's also uh, deal with the fact that um, one second. No, he, he's just going to He's just going to deal with that and any flame that he's like, the closest flame to him is just going to constantly flicker and annoy him too. And with just like a look of disdain, he just shoves this one dwarf like on the table and you notice that this dwarf is just passed out. Honestly, at this point, he just like hit his head on the table and passed out. And then he just kind of walks away for a minute and just goes down this way. Do I recognize that Mm -hmm. Zeminyar cast a spell there? Uh, uh, it is verbal, so he would have had to say something when he casted it. Okay, I tell Zeminyar, "What do you think you're doing?" Oh, you actually mind? I didn't think you had the care in the world for this kind of thing. What did you do? And whatever I pleased. Can I tell that he cast Thaumaturgy? Mm. I would say... Target, so it's hard for me to tell, especially because it was all kind yeah. of verbal. It was all... Yeah, I would say probably not. And you see like the flame flickering, but that would be like your really only dead giveaway. So I would say you probably don't know what spell he casted, but you know he casted something. I tell Zeminyar that he should be careful because not only are we dealing with people who are in their own society considered nobles, this is just the way of the world. He's not going to make a difference by tormenting one man. You're right. But it makes me feel better to know that if I'm going to witness someone being tortured, I can torture the torture. And would it make him feel better if he took his frustration out on those around him? No. Make you feel better if he went and whipped someone twice as hard because you said something mean to him? Well, if it came to that, and let me be blunt, I just recently had, not too long ago, my team was almost pointing their weapons at me. Do you really think I care about my life so much? It's not about your life, but if you're trying to do any kind of good, maybe think about what good you're actually accomplishing. I can't believe I'm actually having reasonable advice about how to treat an elf and you, of all people. 
you need reasonable advice from somewhere. With enough of it, you'd come to see that it, things are best left alone. I'll be sure to tell the other two that you might be worth a damn after all. In any case, now we need to find them again. And as you all are talking, this dwarf kind of walks up and he's like looking and he's like kind of like trying to speak to you all. And he's only speaking in Dwarvish. Hmm. Let's split up from the group. What? Maybe we shouldn't have split up from the group because I can't understand what he's saying. I ask him if he perhaps knows Celestial. In Dwarvish? No, no, no. In <laughs> Celestial, of course. No, he doesn't. <laughs> I look at Miles and go, we should probably go get Winslow. This one seems like he really wants to talk to us. I throw my hands up in exasperation and say, what were, what was the church even thinking sending us here? Like, without a translator, without anything. It's pathetic planning. Not translator. He's just in a different room. <laughs> and you hear this man kind of like halfway like speak very broken calm and go help story. So you do know common if I understand you correctly. Barely. And he just kind of looks and he's like really having issues like figuring out what you're saying and he's like help story. I say to him wait and then I go and to find Winslow. All right. And Winslow, do you come over? I go over and help. All right. <laughs> and as you go to talk to him, he's like, "My, I heard the call that you're looking for someone that has a long lineage and knows about the story Haku. I'm here to talk to you about it. Yes, that's right. What do you know? We will find out next time. There's On the Blessed Hamlet. Time. Who knows the story? <laughs> dun, dun, we... dun. Uh, host, why don't you get, do the sign off with the uh, with the what's going on soon? What? Hello. Hello. What? Hello. There you are. Can we get the wrap up on what streams we're going to be having upcoming this week and next week ish? Well, poop. Um. Okay. So, uh, I don't know why Zero can't do it, but okay. Oh, well, I do it. Sorry, dear, but I can do it. Yeah. All right. So, um, come check us out on Thursday. On Thursday, I'm going to be um. Three, and then on next Monday, since ATP will be on vacation, me and the uh, hostess of this stream are going to be doing some Minecraft. And uh, if it goes anything like the test run, it's going to be a barrel of laughs. So please come and join us. Uh, as um, if you want to make sure that you keep up with all of our stuff, please make sure that you go check out our Discord. Facebook, Twitter, all of which just put plasma uh, backslash plasma coin at the end. Please do us a, a bigger favor and also subscribe to us on YouTube and follow us here on Twitch. Thank you for coming in, and I hope that you all have a wonderful week. Toodles. Also, snow. Also, what? Yes. For being affected by the snowstorm, be safe out there and stay warm. Yes. Stay safe, everyone. We will see you all soon. Bye. Bye.